Traveling billions of miles into space is a task reserved for spacecraft, and NASA's Voyager 1 has been one of the most dependable. Deep into the cosmos, Voyager 1 is causing scientists to raise their eyebrows by transmitting peculiar signals from its current location. From a staggering 23 billion kilometers away, Voyager 1 is sending enigmatic signals back to Earth. Is there a glitch in Voyager 1's system? Or is it faithfully executing its mission by sending crucial warning signals? Join us as we unravel what happened three minutes ago as Voyager 1 just turned back and made a terrifying discovery. Modern humans have surpassed the wildest imaginations of our ancestors. Consider that for millennia, billions of humans gazed at the moon, never imagining the possibility of setting foot on it. I'm gonna step off the limb. Yet, through incredible inventions stemming from the tireless efforts of brilliant scientists and engineers, such achievements are now within our grasp. Organizations like SpaceX and NASA are pushing the boundaries, targeting missions to Mars and propelling us further into space. While the objectives of these missions may vary, landing on Mars represents a pivotal moment that will significantly expand our reach into deep space. Nevertheless, there are inherent limitations to what human space travelers can accomplish. While the vastness of the universe beckons us to explore numerous phenomena, Many of these endeavors would take us billions of miles away from our only comfortable abode, Earth. This is where space probes come into play, serving as our eyes in places beyond our technological reach. Voyager 1, launched four and a half decades ago, stands as a timeless observer in the vastness of space. With its counterpart, Voyager 2, the Voyager missions serve as historical capsules. It encapsulated the essence of their era and captivated the public's imagination during the 1970s and 80s as humanity's pioneering envoys to the outer planets. When evaluating humanity's most extraordinary triumphs, the Voyager missions require acknowledgement, offering unparalleled scientific returns. Voyager 1, in particular, proudly holds the title of the first spacecraft to leave the solar system and venture into interstellar space. Launched in September 1977, Voyager 1 roams more than 14.6 billion miles or 23.5 billion kilometers away from Earth, cementing its position as the most distant spacecraft from our home planet. Its trajectory symbolizes the apex of human innovation and exploration, underscoring our capacity to extend our influence beyond the boundaries of our solar system. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory reported that the spacecraft is steadily propelling itself away from us at an impressive speed. Voyager 1 is currently zooming through space at 38,000 miles per hour, or 17 kilometers per second. Notably, the significance of Voyager 1 endures even 45 years after embarking on its mission to explore the outer planets of our solar system. This probe has exceeded all expectations, continuously transmitting data about its journeys back to Earth. A landmark achievement for the spacecraft happened when it entered interstellar space in August 2012, marking almost 35 years into its journey. However, this groundbreaking discovery was not revealed until 2013, allowing scientists sufficient time to thoroughly analyze the data returned by Voyager 1. Serving as the second of the twin spacecraft to be launched, Voyager 1 was the first to race between Jupiter and Saturn for a generation. The images sent back by Voyager 1 have become integral in school textbooks and numerous media outlets. Notably, the spacecraft carries a unique artifact known as the Golden Record. It was designed to convey voices and music from Earth into space with the hopeful notion that sentient extraterrestrial beings might detect and take interest. These images were compiled by a committee led by astronomer Carl Sagan and stored in gold-plated copper discs engraved in the style of a vinyl record album. A segment of the disc contains audio information, including music, greetings in 55 different languages, some obscure or extinct, 
and nature sounds. In addition, the discs feature 122 images encoded as vibrations on the disc, accompanied by decoding instructions. Symbols on the cover plate of each disc illustrate the method of playing back the record. Image decoding instructions reveal details such as the image start signal, image aspect ratio, and reproduction of the first image, allowing potential extraterrestrial recipients to verify accuracy. Completing the ensemble is a star map depicting Earth's location in the vast cosmic expanse. If the discs are ever played, extraterrestrial listeners would be treated to diverse traditional music from various cultures, including Native American chants, Scottish bagpipes, and African ritual music. The compilation also features a greatest hits collection of classical music, with the more contemporary editions being Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good and a jazz number by Louis Armstrong. Although the world has evolved since the 1970s, now embracing genres like rap and reality TV, it's heartening to have a representation of our cultural heritage so far out in space. In a clever move by NASA, the Voyager mission included a way for potential alien discoverers to learn how long the probe has been in space. If these beings are intelligent enough and familiar with half-life, they can examine the uranium-238 fragment attached to the main bus near the record for isotope ratios. Interestingly, some express concerns that any hostile aliens stumbling upon the Voyager disk might find a map leading them directly to Earth. While this may seem alarming, the Voyagers will spend tens of thousands of years in interstellar space before reaching another star. This renders their situation far from urgent. If the disks are ever discovered, it might be in a distant future where humans may no longer exist. A fascinating aspect of the Voyagers is their endurance in the universe. Even after ceasing to work or transmit, they will outlast us since, with no atmosphere in space, there is no corrosion, and in interstellar space, there is little for them to collide with. One of the most noteworthy accomplishments of Voyager 1 was the Grand Tour, which was made possible by an unusual feature. The Voyager missions capitalized on a rare alignment of the outer planets that occurs once every 176 years. The celestial alignment provided a strategic opportunity for the spacecraft to employ slingshot maneuvers, seamlessly navigating from one planet to the next while maximizing their utilization of limited fuel. Initially, NASA envisioned an ambitious initiative involving two probes charting courses past Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto, and an additional pair venturing past Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune. Regrettably, budgetary limitations compelled NASA to scale down these ambitious plans. Despite these limitations, the two Voyager spacecraft achieved significant milestones. Voyager 2 completed flybys of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, while Voyager 1, staying close to Jupiter and Saturn, almost faced a significant setback during its launch. Its rockets came within 3.5 seconds of running out of fuel. However, the probe successfully entered space and swiftly outpaced its twin, passing through the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter before Voyager 2. On the other hand, Voyager 1 achieved remarkable milestones by delivering Earth its initial glimpses of Jupiter in April 1978, capturing global excitement from a distance of 165 million miles or 266 million kilometers. The revelation triggered celebrations worldwide. Subsequently, in March 1979, Voyager 1 made a startling breakthrough by uncovering a delicate ring encircling the colossal planet. Additionally, the probe identified two previously unknown moons, Thebe and Metis. Noteworthy is that Voyager 1 also transmitted intricate images of Jupiter's prominent Galilean moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, alongside details of Amalthea. Like the pioneering work of the first spacecraft that preceded it, Voyager 1 brought to light the active nature of Jupiter's moons, portraying them as dynamic worlds in their own right. 
Voyager 1 also unearthed fascinating facts about these natural satellites, showcasing Io's numerous volcanoes and mottled yellow-brown-orange surface. These discoveries underscore that moons, similar to planets, can have active interiors, adding to the wealth of knowledge garnered by the Voyager spacecraft. Moreover, Voyager 1 captured and transmitted images of Europa, revealing a seemingly smooth surface marked by lines suggesting ice formations and hinting at the possibility of an underlying ocean. Subsequent observations and analyses indicated that Europa likely harbors a vast subsurface ocean of liquid water capable of supporting life like Earth's. In March 1979, Voyager 1 executed its closest approach to Jupiter, reaching within 174,000 miles or 280,000 kilometers of the turbulent cloud tops. Redirected towards Saturn, the probe provided close-up images of the ringed planet from 1980 onwards. Saturn, like Jupiter, presented unforeseen phenomena, including the discovery of the ethereal F-ring, a structure identified just a year earlier by NASA's Pioneer 11 probe. Voyager 1 also unveiled Prometheus and Pandora, two newly discovered moons with higher resolution cameras, influencing the orbits of icy material within the F-ring. Additionally, the spacecraft encountered Atlas and the G-ring, capturing images of various other moons of Saturn. Among the celestial puzzles encountered by astronomers was Titan, the second largest moon in the solar system after Jupiter's Ganymede. Despite close-up images revealing only an orange haze, sparking years of speculation about its composition, humanity had to wait until the mid-2000s for revelations. This insight came through images captured from beneath the haze by the European Space Agency's Huygens Atmospheric Probe. The encounter with Saturn marked the conclusion of Voyager 1's primary mission, yet the probe was far from retirement. Its focus shifted to tracking the 1,590-pound craft as it accelerated toward interstellar space. However, two decades before that pivotal occurrence, Voyager 1 immortalized a significant moment in the chronicles of space exploration. In February 1990, the spacecraft redirected its gaze towards Earth, capturing an enduring image of its home planet from an extraordinary distance of 3.7 billion miles or 6 billion kilometers. At this astronomical range, Earth looked like a minute speck illuminated by a slender beam of sunlight. On this remarkable day, Voyager 1 also snapped numerous additional photographs. It took a compelling family portrait of the solar system, including five other planets and the Sun. The most memorable image in this compilation, often known as the Pale Blue Dot, stands as a poignant testament to Earth's role as a small sanctuary of life in the vastness of the universe. In August 2012, Voyager 1 accomplished another extraordinary milestone by journeying beyond the heliosphere, a broad envelope of charged particles radiating from the Sun. This revelation became widely known the following year and was disseminated to the public by publishing a study in the Journal of Science. This groundbreaking discovery was made when Voyager 1's plasma wave instrument detected a potent solar eruption between April 9th and May 22nd, 2013. Electrons near Voyager 1 vibrated in response to this eruption. This led researchers to conclude that the spacecraft had entered a higher density region than just inside the heliosphere. At first look, it might seem counterintuitive that electron density is greater in interstellar space than in the Sun's vicinity. However, researchers clarified that the electron density at the heliosphere's edge is significantly lower than at Earth's surface. Examining Voyager 1's data, researchers pinpointed the official departure date as August 25, 2012. This decision was not solely based on electron oscillations, but also on measurements of charged solar particles collected by the spacecraft on that significant day. Coincidentally, it was the day that renowned Apollo 11 astronaut Neil Armstrong passed away. On this pivotal date, 
Voyager 1 detected a remarkable 1,000-fold decrease in these solar particles and a 9% increase in galactic cosmic rays originating from outside the solar system. Voyager 1 found itself at a staggering distance of 11.25 billion miles or 18.11 billion kilometers from the Sun. This is equivalent to approximately 121 astronomical units at that moment. NASA's Planetary Science Division methodically explores the solar system through a sequence of actions – flyby, orbit, land, rove, and return samples. The Voyager missions, acting as the vanguard and architects of this paradigm, have paved the way for subsequent exploration. The Voyager spacecraft was pivotal in surveying the universe and shaping our research priorities by undertaking flybys. These flyby missions have significantly reinforced the success of the planetary science paradigm. The principle of gravity assist, involving using a planet's or another celestial object's mass to alter the speed and trajectory of a spacecraft, was crucial to the success of Voyager's tours of the outer planets. Consider Voyager 2, which skillfully utilized gravity assist to traverse the realms of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. This trailblazing technique laid the groundwork for upcoming missions, empowering subsequent probes to navigate efficiently. Following in its footsteps, many missions have adopted the gravity assist strategy to economize on fuel and significantly curtail travel durations to destinations in the solar system's outer reaches. For example, New Horizons capitalized on Jupiter's gravitational pull to propel itself swiftly towards Pluto. Similarly, on its way to asteroid 101955 Bennu, OSIRIS-REx strategically received a gravity assist from Earth, expediting its journey to the target. In contrast, mission planners for the MESSENGER mission strategically employed gravity to assist in decelerating the spacecraft, ensuring a successful entry into Mercury's orbit. MESSENGER utilized gravitational assistance from Earth, Venus, and Mercury on three occasions before settling into Mercury's orbit. Similarly, on its route to Saturn, Cassini benefited from two gravity assists from Venus and one each from Earth and Jupiter. Cassini, mastering the technique of gravity assists, continually reshaped Saturn's largest moon, Titan, with precise close flybys. This has granted Cassini access to fresh perspectives on numerous Saturnian moons that would otherwise remain inaccessible yielding substantial scientific findings. Another enduring contribution of the Voyager missions to space exploration is their impact on memory management. Despite having limited programmable memory, this resource proved invaluable, continually repurposed for optimal use. Consequently, subsequent planetary missions were equipped with expansive programmable memories. Beyond their technological legacy, the Voyagers pioneered the trajectory for future planetary exploration, offering insights into the ice giants and their moons. Despite utilizing relatively rudimentary instruments and generating modest data volumes, the Voyagers sparked more questions than answered. The journey of discovery highlighted the vastness of our knowledge gaps, prompting advancements in subsequent missions. Notably, the Voyagers paved the way for various NASA missions, including Galileo and Juno's expeditions to Jupiter and the Cassini mission to Saturn, benefiting from gravity assistance courtesy of Jupiter. Furthermore, Voyager 1 has unveiled significant revelations about the solar system's periphery, often called the edge of the sun. Our solar system resides within the Milky Way galaxy, boasting over 100 billion stars. Enveloping the solar system is a protective bubble known as the heliosphere, shielding us from the expansive galaxy beyond and its formidable space radiation. The heliosphere is a crucial shield against the solar wind, a continuous emission of charged particles from the Sun's surface. It extends up to four times the distance of Neptune. Discovered in the late 1950s, the heliosphere remains shrouded in mystery, presenting numerous questions for exploration and investigation. Scientists are delving deeper into understanding how the heliosphere protects astronauts and spacecraft from radiation. More broadly, 
they are looking at how stars influence their neighboring planets. In the cosmic context, radiation serves varied purposes. It warms leftovers in microwaves, contributes to medical imaging, and in a familiar scenario, bathes us in sunlight during sunbathing. However, space radiation, like that emitted by radioactive elements like uranium, has a different nature. Galactic cosmic radiation, GCR, refers to space radiation emitted by distant stars, supernovae, black holes, and neutron stars. These active areas in the galaxy can strip electrons from atoms and accelerate nuclei to nearly the speed of light, generating GCR. On Earth, we benefit from three layers of protection against space radiation. The first is the heliosphere, which acts as a barrier, preventing GCR from reaching the major planets in our solar system. Earth's magnetic field also creates the magnetosphere, shielding our planet and low-orbiting satellites from GCR, such as the International Space Station. Finally, the Earth's atmosphere absorbs radiation, providing a third layer of protection. However, when astronauts embark on journeys to the Moon or Mars, they won't have the same layered protection as on Earth. They will rely solely on the heliosphere, which fluctuates in size over the Sun's 11-year cycle. The Sun undergoes cycles of intense activity and powerful solar winds during each solar cycle, alongside quieter periods when solar winds subside. This dynamic behavior causes the heliosphere to deflate and expand, resembling a balloon. Comprising four main components, the heliosphere's innermost layer houses the significant planets, where the solar wind travels at full speed, unaffected by galactic pressure. The termination shock marks the outer boundary of this core layer. Beyond the termination, shock lies the heliosheath, where the solar wind encounters pressure from the interstellar medium, moving more slowly and flexing. The heliosphere is followed by the heliospars, a sharp plasma boundary where the solar and interstellar winds collide, balancing inside and outside pressures. The outermost layer is the outer heliosheath, extending just beyond the heliopause, still influenced by the presence of the heliosphere. Voyager 1 collaborated with the interstellar boundary explorer, Ibex, to study the heliosphere. IBEX, a compact satellite weighing 176 pounds, was launched by NASA in 2008 to explore and analyze the heliosphere. Since its launch, IBEX has been in Earth's orbit, equipped with telescopes to observe the outer boundary of the heliosphere. The satellite detects and analyzes energetic neutral atoms, ENAs, that traverse its path, formed when the interstellar medium and solar wind collide. Some ENAs return to the solar system's center, providing valuable information about the heliosphere's structure. By collecting a multitude of individual ENAs, scientists can create an inside-out image of our heliosphere. The discoveries made by IBEX, coupled with data from Voyager 1 and 2, revealed significant changes in the heliopause. It explains the substantial gap between the two probes' entries into interstellar space in 2012 and 2018, respectively. Voyager 1 also detected a peculiar hum originating from outside the solar system, a phenomenon discovered by Stella Koch, a Cornell University doctoral student in astronomy. Koch and her colleagues identified this droning sound in Voyager's plasma wave system, PWWS, data which measures electron density. Though faint and monotone, the persistent background hum remains a mystery, potentially offering clues about interstellar space and the heliosphere's interaction. It is believed that the droning sound may hold valuable information about disturbances in the gas caused by the sun. Most importantly, it provides insights into the dynamics of interstellar space. While Voyager 1 has been instrumental in advancing our understanding of space, it has recently presented a challenge to NASA. The probe's Attitude Articulation and Control System, AACS, responsible for controlling its orientation and high-gain antenna, 
has returned data that contradicts the spacecraft's actual state. Despite indications that the AACS is operational, the telemetry data it returns appears random or inconsistent. However, this anomaly hasn't triggered onboard fault protection systems, and Voyager 1 continues to receive and execute commands from Earth. It further suggests that the high-gain antenna remains directed toward Earth. The team diligently monitors the situation to identify whether the invalid data stems from the AACs or another system involved in telemetry data production and transmission. Despite the challenges, Suzanne Dodd, project manager for Voyager 1 and 2, expressed confidence that the team would find a solution. The spacecraft, now almost 45 years old and operating in an environment it wasn't originally designed, faces unique challenges. Nevertheless, the team remains committed to addressing any issues that may arise and ensuring the continued success of the Voyager mission. In the long term, Voyager 1's mission is limited by the lifespan of its nuclear batteries, which generate electricity from plutonium decay. The spacecraft produces 4 watts of heat less every year, prompting NASA to shut down redundant systems and operate only essential instruments. While time is running out for Voyager 1, the dedicated team maximizes its scientific contributions until the spacecraft's eventual end. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.